Greetings Commanders, it's Riantium here, and today we are back once again in Stellaris Console Edition, taking a look at the Dev Diaries. I believe it was Dev Diary 21, and now Dev Diary 22. So it's definitely been a hot second since I went ahead and put out a video on the uh, Commander Riantium channel, and that was mainly because the previous Dev Diary, Dev Diary 21, didn't really have all the meat and potatoes that I was looking for to do a, you know, a long extended video on, or even a small breakdown, but I figured with <clears throat> Dev Diary 22 coming out, we can go ahead and lump 21 and 22 into the same video and have a nice big discussion about that. So let's briefly touch on what Dev Diary 21 was on. So the console edition Dev Diary 21 came out and the title was Precursor Changes and Planet Designations. Two features that are um, obviously within the PC version, and when they came to PC, uh, definitely allowed you to specialize your planets more, but also kind of took away from the, the kind of planning what precursor you could have. Because I'm sure a lot of us who have played Stellaris Console Edition knew exactly where the first league would spawn, they knew exactly where the Cybrex would spawn, and obviously no one wants the Boltom or the Ute. Uh, but <laughs> that is no longer the, the possibility. So with that change, the precursor spawning is now more random, and it's also more likely to spawn the quote-unquote reward system in your space as opposed to in your arch enemy's space. What I'm interpreting that to mean is, in the event of you finishing the Cybrex precursor chain, or the First League, or the Voltom, or the Ute, um, it will then, instead of trying to spawn it somewhere far farther away, sometimes ending up in your uh, enemy's space, it will then instead uh, spawn the home system of your precursor inside of your space, that way you can actually take advantage of the thing that you just did all the work for. So the other new feature that was listed in the Dev Diary was the planetary designations, and this is a pretty easy one to get your, to get your fingers wrapped around, but it's honestly one of the nicest ways to specialize your planets. Now what it means is, if you look on screen right now, you'll see a couple of the screenshots that were linked within the Dev Diary, and what this means is you're able to change the designation of your planet based on what you want to produce there. So if you have a very high mineral uh, mineral district or mining district planet and you want to specialize to get even more out of that, you can turn your planet into a mining world. If you have a whole, if you have a large city planet uh, without it being an ecumenopolis and you want it to be uh, an alloy world until it's turned into an ecumenopolis, you can absolutely do that by turning it into a forge world. It's very nice because it gives small bonuses that really add up, especially if you take a look at the Forge one, you know, you being able to build the Forges 25% faster while also spending 20% less on the upkeep of them. Because we all know the Metallurgists and Alloys is key to building large, large amounts of fleets, large amounts of um, science ships, large amounts of construction ships, everything like that. So then after Dev Diary 21 came Dev Diary 22, and as soon as I saw it was talking about Empire Sprawl and Admin Cap, I was so happy. Because if there's one change to the admin capacity and kind of the Empire Sprawl mechanic that we needed, it was this one. And that is the addition of Bureaucrats and Bureaucrat Jobs. So in this dev diary, it details what is going to happen to Empire Sprawl. So in the beginning, Empire Sprawl was more so, or I should say post 2.2, Empire Sprawl was linked to how many systems you had, how many planets you had, how many districts you had, and uh, you know, how many pops you had. And it would increase over time because the more you you know expand, the more districts you need, the more planets you need, the more systems you need, Stellaris is all about more and more and more. However, in this update, whenever it decides to come out, Pops are now going to be the thing that can increase the uh, the admin cap, but also will increase your empire sprawl. And what I mean by the pops doing both is the fact that the bureaucrat job is now a job for the pop that will increase the amount of admin capacity that you have. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if you take a look on screen right now, there's a there's a picture of the bureaucrat job and the bureaucrat building. What this does is it is a job that creates admin capacity. Now there's two upgrades to it, which is awesome by the way, and it consumes consumer goods in order for you to uh, continue to uh, expand your admin capacity. Having a planet dedicated to only admin capacity is one of the best things ever because now, early game, sure, you'll probably take a few penalties here and there with your admin cap being a little bit higher than it should be. However, when you begin to get into the mid game and you know late early game you can then begin to designate a planet have only bureaucrats on that planet creating more and more admin capacity for you to begin to expand quite rapidly 
And what's cool is following along with the dev diary number 21 with the planet designations, there's actually a bureaucratic planet designation as well called the bureaucratic center. Now, this is something that's really kind of interesting, and I'm going to get into kind of speculation territory here. So, you know, none of this is confirmed, but I'm going to get into a little bit of speculation. The bureaucrats, if I'm not mistaken, came out with the Federation's DLC. I could be wrong about that, and I've been trying to keep up with, you know, when things were added, but if it was added in the Federation's DLC, which, again, I'm not sure if it was, does that mean that possibly one day down the down the road in the future we could possibly see federations on console i'm really really hoping so because it looks like we're heading towards um the you know the current pc version faster and faster and faster whether or not we'll get there who knows uh, but you can definitely uh, stay tuned and we'll uh, we'll talk all about that and everything like that so there are specific things that can happen with um, machine intelligences as well as hive minds. However, we're going to go over that eventually once the update actually comes out, and we can go into it with a little bit more detail and a little bit more information. So that's kind of what I had for you today. We touched briefly on the changes to the precursors, as well as the new planetary designations, which will very much help you specialize your planets. Then we got started talking about the admin cap and the empire sprawl, and how the new bureaucrat jobs and the bureaucratic centers will help to manage and control your admin cap and your empire sprawl. So let me know if you guys are super excited for anything else coming with Solaris Console Edition. It really does seem like we're just ramping up with, with updates and, you know, uh, announcements and everything like that. And I'm really looking forward to the next Dev Diary. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. And with that, this is Commander Ryantium, signing off.